In this video, we'll be learning about customizing our environment more in the shot generator. Um, if you've skipped the last couple of videos, go ahead and watch those where we learned about the basics of the shot generator. But we're just going to go back in here and we've kind of learned, I kind of want to refresh this a little bit. So if we make changes to anything in here, we make changes to the poses or to the location of anything or the camera, we can click to save to board. And what that'll do is overwrite the current board that we're on or we can do insert as a new board. And what that'll do is create a, a new board, in this case, a third board. And so we can kind of see the progression of our scene a little bit. So we can either create a new frame and then go into it, but then we have to create our board from scratch. So if we want to work with the existing, we can close this and we can go back to the existing one. Maybe we'll delete this one first by hitting the delete key on the keyboard. And then we can go into this shot and then edit it a little bit and then go insert as new board. It's, it can be a little bit confusing that process, but that's the best way to do it is edit an existing one. And then when you go insert new board, it really kind of saves it. So you keep your, your original and then your next uh, iteration of that scene. Does that make sense? Anyway, in this video, we're going to be uh, learning some more things that we can change about our environment here. So we've learned these different characters have names. We have character one, character two. We can change that if we want to. This character two, we can click right here where it says character two properties, and we can give them names like Tom for this person. Oh, did that, and we have to hit set. We'll call it Tom, hit set, and now that person's called Tom. Character one, we can call like Bill or something and go set. And we can even do the objects. This object one, we don't know what it is. Is this the door? Is this the chair? And so, oh, actually, it's the bookshelf. We turned it off last time. So this bookshelf, we can click and we can call it bookshelf, or we can just delete it altogether. We can click this X here. It comes up with this dialog, says, are you sure you want to delete? Yes, and now it's gone. Another way to delete, if we want to delete like um, Tom, for example, um, we can just click on, which one's Tom? This one, and then hit the delete key, and then uh, they're deleted as well. Uh, so let's change, we can change the chair here, so we can see which one is the chair. Okay, this is the door, so we can call it door. And this one is the chair, so we'll just call it uh, chair. So that's sort of uh, a good idea to do your scene. You can even name your cameras. And we can have multiple cameras too, and that's why it's good to be able to name your camera. Looks like I even put a light in here, so I'm going to delete that because we'll talk about adding lights in uh, in this video. So what we can do, this scene right here, uh, it actually has some settings of its own, independent from the, we've learned that the people have settings that we can change their pose and their location and the way they ap appear. And the objects, of course, have different uh, options, which size is one that we didn't really look at. We can change the size of the objects. Anyway, um, also, if we click on scene, it also has some options of its own. The first option that scene has is the ground. Do you want to show ground or not? Right now it's checked. If we uncheck it, it's not showing the ground. So you may or may not want that. The option after that is this BG color. That's the background color. And it's really the shade. Right now it's one. We can toggle it between zero and one. And it's sort of how dark it is. So we can make it nighttime. We can have it be like lighter gray. It's what we want the sky to be. And it's the shade. Uh, you can't do a color here because, well, you could achieve color. But this is really just a model giving us an idea for how something will look. So you can't color, color the chair and the sky and different things, at least not directly. What we could do, if, if you're interested in doing color, you could go to insert as a new board, and then we can go to that board and grab something like this pastel, make it quite large, and then you could color the sky like a blue just to give people an idea. But again, we're not trying to create a finished product here. We're not trying to create like a finished, uh, a fully finished uh, video. This is just a nice model, a nice storyboard for us. And so if it helps us to know that this chair is green, then we can go out and, and find a green chair for this scene. Does that make sense? But when we go back into the scene editor, it's not going to have those colors. Uh, anyway, uh, what I want to talk about is here is a, a pretty important part of our scene is the visible room. So when we check this, it's going to make a room appear. And right now we can back up our camera and see this is actually a room here. So we see our objects are kind of behind it. And so this room has some different options. So we can change, if we go click back into our scene and go to room, we can change, for example, the width of the room. We can change the height of the room. We could make like a giant, a giant room here. We can change the uh, length of the room so that it includes all of the things that we have drawn in here. And then we can maybe make the width so that it gets that door just kind of perfectly. And so now we have a guy here inside of this room. 
uh, and it, and we can have sort of a scene where we can move move the camera around to how we want to look in this scene. I'll delete this chair so we get more realistic looking. And so you can you can figure out your character. We can have them come here and be walking in, uh, you know, in the door doing something, and you can build a scene accordingly. There's some more settings here in scene as well. Um, we can change like the ambient light. So we see there's some light here, some shadows happening right now. There's a light happening somewhere up in the sky, or I don't know where that light's coming from, but we can change the way that that ambient light looks by just making some changes in here and see you know, how, how, these how the light is affected, the angle that light's coming from. I guess that's maybe the sun, the tilt. So there's all kinds of different options there. And we can also add in lighting, which really helps in environments like this. So we add in a light, and then we can move it around as well by just clicking on it. So we can put a light over top of this guy, and then that light has some different options as well. So we can raise that light to go up, have it be up on the ceiling, and then we won't actually see that little yellow light, but when we look at our scene, we can see, okay, got it, there's the door here, this is where Bill is gonna be, and the, he needs to be a little bit in front of the light. And so it really can help you uh, create this scene and get kind of the, figure out where you need your lighting. And so you can create a pretty cool scene there. Um, so play with some of those options under scene uh, that we that we have in here, and um, this is just going to be our environment. So this is going to be more like the outside environment, uh, but in the room we can't really see those changes right now. So uh, play with those. I think we're getting kind of to the end of what we can see here. Oh, we can open in VR. I haven't done this yet, but this open in VR option lets you actually do a virtual visit to your scene. So you could kind of walk around and look and almost feel like you're there. And that can maybe help you, depending on how detail-oriented you are, uh, maybe can help you see what that scene's going to look like, and you can maybe save some time and frustration in the future by doing a virtual visit of your scene before you actually set it up and the cam get the camera crew and lighting and everything there, assuming you're doing like a big production. But uh, yeah. Oh, and then volume here, we can do this. Volume is like a, a fog. So if we want to do volume, we can zoom out here. We can move our camera. <clears throat> and um, it's going to be more like... Um, creating a fog. Where's our volume? Did it? Do we add it? Yeah. So the volume options we have sort of. Uh, this is like we can do rain. We can do fog. And it's kind of subtle in here. We can do explosion. So this explosion one. If we go turn off our room on our environment, and cover. I feel like I'm covering a lot in this video, but um, I think you can handle it. Let's turn off our room. Make it not visible. So now we see this sort of explosion. Um, happening and that's this volume so the volumes aren't super self-explanatory but that's what it is it's just a this one we have a rain let's get rid of our rain one so that we're just seeing our uh, volume one and this explosion has different options different layers the depth and the height of our explosion so if we wanted to um, yeah play around with that and then it has rain as well and you can change the location of all this of this volume as well so that really is just about everything for the shot generator I'm getting to the end of what I think I can teach you, and hopefully you've, you're feeling kind of confident of using Storyboarder. You can use it, like I said, uh, you can use it to create an actual, like a children's storybook. You can use it to create a basic animation, or you can use it to actually storyboard out a, a video or a commercial or all kinds of different things. So I hope you found this series informative. Um, as new uh, ideas come or new features maybe come out, uh, or if you have any questions on specific videos, I may add to this tutorial series in the future. Uh, but for now, I think I'm going to leave it here. So thanks so much for watching. Um, go ahead and check out some of my other tutorials if you're interested. Um, if you like this, you might also like OpenTunes, which is an open source, um, full-featured uh, 2D and kind of semi-3D animation program. Um, Blender also has some great uh, animation and modeling uh, for 3D. So you maybe, maybe check out those tutorials as well. But uh, yeah, appreciate you watching, and we'll catch you in the next series.